There are other, you know, there's a couple other versions. Um, you can have an open loop or closed loop system as well. So if you think about like our motor speed, one of the things that we did with a, with a variable frequency drive, you know, where this driver might be a VFD and this controller unit might be your PLC. The PLC says, hey, um, you know, I want the motor to go 500 RPMs. And so what the, the VFD does is it says, okay, well, I need to send, uh, you know, whatever signal, a four volt signal to the, or excuse me, I need to send a four volt signal to the VFD. And then the VFD is going to say, oh, I'm going to, you know, I need a 20 Hertz signal to the motor. And, you know, at some point, maybe that's 500 RPMs, right? Um, the trouble with this open loop system is I have no feedback. I'm telling this thing to go 500 RPMs, we'll say. Um, but I have no idea if it is or isn't going 500 RPMs. I'm just giving it a blind command to go 500 RPMs. That may work very, very well, um, but depending on the motor or the, the linkages hooked up to that motor or whatever it might be, you know, it may be running at 400 RPMs. What open loop means is I have no feedback. There is no feedback to monitor what's actually happening. So basically, I have a, you know, a set point, but I have no feedback as far as whether or not it's doing what I want it to do. Now on this bottom one down here, we've got feedback. This is what we call closed loop. So open loop on the top means no feedback. Closed loop on the bottom means we have feedback. So as an example, I would have something like a tachometer um, and it doesn't have to be like a you know physical tachometer that you're gonna hold onto the motor shaft. There could actually be a, or it could be even better than a tachometer. You might have something like an encoder. An encoder is a, a disc that hooks up to the back of the motor shaft. So we can actually track the number of pulses per second and we can determine the RPMs. Um, so this feedback mechanism says, okay, I want the motor to go 500 RPMs. And now the feedback is gonna tell me, well, it's actually going 490 RPMs. And then the controller can make a decision. It can say, look, we're not going quite fast enough. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a little bit to this thing. I'm gonna add 10 RPMs to this and see what happens. So I'm actually telling it to go 510 RPMs now, and all of a sudden I get a, a signal back that says, okay, now I'm going 500 RPMs. So there has to be some sort of some sort of decision making in here, but it is getting feedback. It's getting it's it's sending out a command here, and it's getting feedback here. So it knows what it told the motor to do, and it knows what it's what's what the motor's actually doing. That's what we call a closed loop control, and that can be a speed setting that can be a temperature setting that can be a pressure sensing a, a flow setting it can be lots of different things that we we'd, we'd want to know feedback for a great example of that is the cruise control on your car you know so you've got this car here uh i'm gonna draw a little fancy car here um i got my car that's driving down the road here and as this car drives down the road at some point i say you know what i'm gonna set my cruise control so i'm gonna set my cruise control at the desired speed so I hit the cruise, um, I hit set, and now I'm set at, uh, at 55 miles an hour, we'll say, right? That's awesome. Now my process variable is what is my actual speed? And if I'm on a nice flat, I might discover, yep, I can maintain that 55 miles an hour. So this, this process variable is really the feedback that I'm gonna get you know, from the speedometer or from the, the sensors that are, are reading my actual speed. Now what's gonna happen eventually is this car is gonna hit a hill. And when I hit a hill, all of a sudden I'm going uphill with my car. And as I'm going up this hill, um, my speed drops to 50 miles per hour. And what's, what's, what needs to happen? Well, that feedback, the process variable says, hey, I'm going too slow. So the controller output's gonna say, hey, I need to, I need to accelerate a little bit. I need to accelerate on the gas a little bit um, because I'm going up a hill. Or if I'm going down a hill later on, I might need to coast a little bit. So the idea is my set point is the desired speed, the, you know, the, the process variable. So we call this set point SP many times. The process variable, this is my actual speed. And then the, the control variable or the controller output is, you know, what do I need to do? Am I gonna accelerate? You know, um, even better yet, do I need to go faster or need to, do I need to go slower? What do I need to do? And we don't want to have to hit these buttons. We want the computer to make that decision for us. And it's going to speed up or slow down to maintain me at 55 miles an hour, regardless of hills or other things that are going on. 
you know, other closed loop control examples. Um, let's see here, we've got, uh, you know, this cold product coming in, you know, maybe this is a dough or, or some sort of mix. You know, I always think when I look at this one, I think of like, a, uh, I don't know, like you're, you're at a, a, a company that's, uh, you know, making food or something like that. I think of like cookie dough or something, right? And so I've got this cold cookie dough mixed up and I wanna be able to uh, extrude it or do something with it. So I need to warm it up a little bit. So what I've got is I've got steam coming through here and the steam is a heat exchanger. What a heat exchanger is, is imagine tubes going around. If this is a pipe with cold product in it, imagine tubes going around that pipe with steam. Um, the pipe is going to heat up and the, the material that's inside that pipe is going to heat up as well, even though even though the steam and the and the cold product never actually touch. You know, if I think about, you know, my pipe going down like this, right, um, with my product inside of it, this this heat exchanger could be that I have this tube full of steam that wraps around it like this. And so I heat up that pipe and now I get warm product coming out. Now, the idea might be um, I've got, you'll see a little sensor, it's called a, an RTD, it's a relative temperature is what we're reading on this. Um, I'm gonna get a reading based upon, you know, I'm gonna say, well, I want my warm product coming out to be, you know, I don't know, 70 degrees F or something like that, right? Um, I'm gonna take a reading on this sensor right here. That's gonna go back here, and this, this controller is gonna say, look, um, you're too warm or too cold. If I'm coming in at 69, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have this valve, this temperature valve here, is gonna allow more steam to flow through the heat exchanger. Um, you know, if my, if my set point is, is 70 degrees and my actual uh, process variable is actually 68 degrees, the controller is gonna say, look, you're two degrees too low. I wanna open up this valve a little bit more and get more steam. Getting more steam, maybe 68 goes to 69, you know, and maybe 69 goes to 70. Oh, and guess what? It's possible that it might go too high. Now it went to 71 degrees. Now it's gonna say, out of the control, it's gonna say, hey, I'm a little too warm now. I want you to shut that valve a little bit. You know, and now I go down to 70 degrees. And now the heat exchanger is just right for the product. Now, a couple of things can happen. The steam temperature could change a little bit. The product coming in could be a little colder, a little warmer, um, but I'm trying to maintain this temperature. So I've got lots of different pieces that fit into this closed loop control system. Thank you.